a very good day we bid to our beloved lecturer Dr. Timoli and our fellow classmate. Today, we would like to present on our case study that title Everything People Have to Know About Kuala Lumpur City Hall, The Fall and Rise. Before we begin our presentation, I would like to introduce our team members that consist of Amar Alif bin Abdullah, Syed Ahmad bin Syed Muhammad Sobri, Nurul Atirah bin T. Hashim, and lastly, me, Nur Zafira bin T. Zamri. I shall pass the presentation to Amar Alif. Before we proceed with our discussion, I would like to introduce you to the presentation agenda. First, we are going to have introduction. Second, challenges faced by DBKL in achieving good urban governance. Third, initiative taken by DBKL to counter the challenges faced in achieving good urban governance. Fourth, recommendation for future urban governance initiative. And last but not least is conclusion. Now, I'm going to introduce to you the concept of urban governance and overview on Kuala Lumpur and Kuala Lumpur City Hall. Urban governance can be described as the coordination of initiative between state, private and urban government to organize and determine the structure of the microeconomic conditions and fulfill the expectation of stakeholders and citizens. In Kuala Lumpur, the idea of urban governance is associated to the latest vision of Kuala Lumpur Structure Plan 2040 and Kuala Lumpur City Hall is responsible in working towards achieving the plan's aspiration. According to a draft of Kuala Lumpur Structure Plan 2040, the urban governance in Kuala Lumpur is anticipated to increase the population diversity regardless of age and empower vulnerable groups for future betterment. Also, urban governance in Kuala Lumpur can be regarded as building a society that is resilient to technological changes, has easy access to knowledge, subject to feedback, and has a balanced and assured decent quality of life. Kuala Lumpur City Hall is the governing bodies of Malaysia's national capital, which is Kuala Lumpur. And growing from a small town, Kuala Lumpur has developed into the country's biggest city, becoming a center for business, finance, administration, education, religion, culture and sports in the region. Thus, in this presentation, we are going to emphasize on three important components which are challenges and initiative by the Kuala Lumpur City Hall and also we are going to recommend some recommendation for future betterment of local authority management in Kuala Lumpur. Now, let us proceed with the challenges faced by the BKL in achieving good urban governance. Now, let me start with the first challenges faced by DBKL in achieving good urban governance, which is rapid city development. All right. According to Hamza, Jalaluddin and Azmizam in 2009, they explained two factors that contribute to the challenges. First, high growth population and second, lack of defined municipal boundaries. All right. Before I explain about the factors, let me briefly explain the pattern of Kuala Lumpur development. All right, the development starts in the central of Kuala Lumpur, then further projects begin to expand from the central point of our interest, which is also the focal point and tourist attraction for Kuala Lumpur. Following the increase of high-rise towers, companies, recreation centers, restaurants and apartments in South Center. All right, now back to the factors. The first factor, high growth in population leads to the demand for construction of new housing areas, social facilities, industries, and other urban use of space. Second, uh, the lack of defined municipal boundaries has contributed to the urban expansion in areas that are vulnerable to the climate and inappropriate uh, areas for construction. This situation of rapid city development was also brought on by the problem of failure to comply with the current construction plan. This condition leads to diverse uh, urbanization problem and consequently lower the standards of urban life. Now, I'm going to talk about second challenges faced by the BKL in achieving good governance, which is high carbon emission intensity. Like carbon dioxide is a primary greenhouse gas which is responsible for about three quarters of emission and high emissions of carbon may cause serious environmental and health issue and it may derive from several factors. First, tremendous fossil fuel energy consumption, 
where Malaysia's electric uh, generation is still highly reliant on fossil fuel, where the usage of fossil fuel uh, may cause uh, environmental impact as the combustion will uh, emit a harmful substance to the environment. Higher demands of electricity means there will be high demands for fossil fuel in the future. Second, increasing personal vehicle ownership. The number of registered vehicles has reached 28.2 million as of 2017 and Kuala Lumpur, Putrajaya and Labuan has posted the highest personal vehicle. And the increasing trend of uh, personal car ownership may cause serious environmental damage such as global warming, air quality and public health uh, effect. Third, uh, low efficiency appliances and renewable energy utilization means uh, people tend to buy a low efficient appliances which may consume high electricity consumption. And currently, in Malaysia, we are only at infant stage for a renewable energy utilization where it only uh, utilizes 8% of the renewable energy. Thank you, Atira. So the third point is lower urban quality of life. In a simple word, lower urban quality of life is referring how someone perceives their level of satisfaction on few aspects, such as in terms of housing, in terms of environmental, in terms of education, working life, and more others. So we can see DBKLD are facing challenges in terms to develop Kuala Lumpur area because of first rapid influx of urban population that caused by the intermigration, uh, intermigration and also the influx of foreign worker because they said that Kuala Lumpur could offer them a better job opportunity. Second one is regarding inadequate housing for low income group. People that poor at the urban area are called as urban poor and they are the group of people that not afford to own a normal market price house. So it will invite the problem of high number of slum dwellers and also the increased number of homelessness at the KL area. So the third reason for low urban quality of life is due to the heavy traffic congestion. We can see that in Kuala Lumpur from one place to another place it took a very long time. When this when this happened, it has greatly affected the public's daily routine in general. We can see that public are spending many times or long duration of period to face the congestion and it has reduced their life productivity. Not only their life productivity, they are uh, already wasting their time, their energy and also their money. All the three points are reflected to the lower urban quality of life. Next, will be presented by Said. Now we will proceed with the last challenges that was faced by DBGL in order to have a good urban governance, which is the rising of crime rates. So many Malaysians fear with the rising crime in their surrounding, and this is because crime is a rampant and it affects people of all backgrounds of society. So as a result, many social researchers have looked at the various variables that affect crime rates and how these factors are controlled to minimize the level of crime rate and there are several reports on crime and its factors such as unemployment, immigrant and urban poverty that have contributed to the high crime rate particularly in Kuala Lumpur <coughs> and crime is often seen as a problem in communities of high unemployment, poverty, immigrants, the environment, the, uh, the number of homeless persons, the minorities and age distribution or educational embedment and in 2017 Kuala Lumpur has been recorded to have the highest level of crime index in Malaysia. Now moving on to initiative taken by DBKL to counter the challenges faced in achieving good governance. One of the initiatives taken by DBKL to counter the challenges faced in achieving good urban governance is by making Kuala Lumpur towards smart city. Kuala Lumpur City Hall through the city planning department has uh, produced a study report for the plan Induk Bandar Pinta Kuala Lumpur 2021 until 2035 and plan Diraka Iklim Kuala Lumpur 2050 thus preparing Kuala Lumpur is a smart city and are capable for repelling various challenges both of these plans are made to overcome these uh, challenges so that Kuala Lumpur become a popular city to be visited by international investors and tourists all right According uh, to the Kuala Lumpur mayor, 
for the next uh, 20 years, Kuala Lumpur will continue to focus on people looking for a place uh, to live or build a house when they are arrive in the city. To ensure Kuala Lumpur can be a smart city and overcome many issues such as rapid rate of development, environmental and other, DBKL introduced seven components which is smart economy, a smart mobility, a smart environment, smart living, smart people, smart governance and smart digital infrastructure that the city council needs to achieve to obtain the smart city title. Now, I'm going to talk about second initiative taken by DBKL in achieving good governance where they have introduced low carbon society program specifically mitigate the issue of climate change. The idea of this uh, program basically is to assimilate the current plans and efforts of Kuala Lumpur in addressing the climate change issue through holistic low carbon measures by reducing the carbon emissions without jeopardizing the existing vision and development goals of the city. And according to the Kuala Lumpur Low Carbon Society Blueprint 2030, the program was expected to generate 70% of total carbon mitigation program in Kuala Lumpur as for 2030 and now DBKL are collaboratively work with Tokyo Metropolitan Government to discover and learn more low carbon best practices from successful country in uh, climate change issue. As for 2018, um, DBKL has uh, completed 10 programs such as disseminate great information to the public, uh, transforming 50,000 conventional light uh, to LED street light and gazetted all forests for public intent and uh, for, they have 147 ongoing programs such as street planting, free bus ride uh, service and energy saving management plan. Also in future, they plan to have 100 new programs such as electric car promotion and solar uh, power workshop. Again, thank you Atira. So the third initiative that has been taken by DBKL is by adopting the Wilayah Peduli Policy. Basically, this policy has been introduced by Ministry of Federal Territory in 2019 in which DBKL become one of the executors of this policy. So the idea of this policy is basically to enhance the quality of life and to ensure that the needy group are not forgotten. So under this initiative, there has been many programs that has been undertaken during 2019 and also in 2020. So this policy consists of six trusts which is clean territory, public safety, efficient public transportation, green environment, sustainable social so economy inclusive community as you can see there are the list of program that has been taken as I stated at here and we can understand that from this policy actually local government or DBKL they are would like to inform to public that DBKL always there to receive and hear any complaints opinion suggestions or demands that public would like to share with them in order for them to improve their service delivery. Remember that Wilayah Peduli is more is regarding that the local government is taking care of the public welfare, benefit, needs and more others. Next slide will be presented by Said. Let us proceed with the last initiative that has been used by DBKL in order to have a good urban governance, which is the Safe City Program. So, uh, the Malaysian Crime Prevention Foundation, MCPF, have introduced the Safe City Program to the Malaysian government in early 1998 in order to reduce crime possibilities and to establish a safer community. And in 2005, the National Council for Local Government has approved this initiative of safety program and also have directed all 38 peninsula Malaysian local authorities including cities and municipal council to cooperate in this initiative including Kuala Lumpur City Hall DBKL. In Kuala Lumpur, the safety program environmental design or CPTED initiative has been incorporated the city's planning, priorities, and crime reduction via which include as one of the structure plan 2020 and will strive to be a primary concern in the preparation of Kuala Lumpur Structure Plan 2040. This initiative are intended to deter unfavorable events such as crime, 
and misbehaviors from occurring among city dweller and there are several tool or policy that have been applied by DBKL in order to reduce the crime in Kuala Lumpur through the Safe Cities program. Next presentation will be continued with recommendation for future urban governance initiative and I will pass to Arma Alif. The first recommendation for future urban governance initiative is have a good urban planning. The scope of urban planning covers uh, the preparation and administration of district, cities, regional areas, plans and regulations. Aim as an urban planner is to lead the urban planning of a current or new city, considering public and environmental health. A successful urban planner will also adopt a sustainable, climate-based and environmental-friendly approach to environmental management logistically and catastrophe risk reduction. Thus, by having a good urban planning in DBKL, it will allow for the urban development can be done accordingly and will leave the standard as level as advanced cities in the world. Now, I'm going to talk about uh, second recommendations for better urban governance for DBKL. So, which is focus on climate change parameters that integrate directly to local communities. Basically, the idea of this um, recommendation is closely related to increasing the environmental awareness through psychological remote approach among public. Basically, people might see environmental issue as part of problem that beyond their control, something that is intangible, something that people might see that it is not their responsibility to contribute. So, the local government need to strategize uh, initiative that could change their perspective on the envir on environmental issue that could directly uh, threaten them and their daily chores. So, for like example, exposing them to the effect of climate change on the community's local food or water sources will help them to recognize the direct impact if they don't do something to mitigate, to help the government in mitigating the issue. Basically, the idea is make them believe that the, the issue of climate change is real and it could disturb them, put them out of comfort zone and make them realize that it is important for them to participate in the local uh, agenda, local government agenda in addressing the issue of climate change, for instance. So basically, environmental awareness through psychological remote is very important to increase level of awareness among public. Thank you, Atira. So the third recommendation is establish city hall public health and well-being plan. So basically, the idea to create a livable city, it needs to be balanced in so many aspects, either in terms of economy, in terms of social, in terms of infrastructure and political. Thus, what DBKL now need to do is, we can see that DBKL, in terms of infrastructure, in terms of development, they are moving very fast forward, but they also need to balance. They also need to balance with the social life of the citizen Kuala Lumpur, in which DBKL now they need to come up with a holistic and a sustainable town planning that is parallel with the global aspiration, which is we are creating the livable community. We we need to know in order to have a livable community, it is depends highly on the living condition and also the environmental and the quality of the environment of the person. So basically, we are recommending or we are stressing in terms of health because it is starting from health. A good health will shape a good community and a good community will shape a good nation building. This recommendation was inspired from local government in Melbourne City, Australia, in which local government of Melbourne City, Australia has become the second second best local government for quality of life which is granted by the united nation in 2015 so i will pass the presentation to said now we will proceed with the last recommendation for the future urban governance initiative which is to implementing a situational crime prevention strategies so this uh, strategies has been introduced by ronald v club in 1997 and this strategy focus on how rather than when offenses 
are okay and how they can be avoided so for example one of the SCP strategies is to installing a surveillance equipment in areas where there is a lot of crime particularly in urban area and this SCP policy has been broadly implemented worldwide and successfully reduce the crime rate for the mod moderate devious common crime and accidentally serious crime thus dbkl should collaborate with the pdrm to adopt the scp strategy to lower the crime rate in urban areas okay now we have reached to the ending of this discussion so for conclusion local government is the lowest level of government that is regarded as the closest to the people it means that every decision action and instruction from the local government may immediately influence the public affair if the local government fail to perform at its best it will cause a disturbance and lower the public satisfaction and this will bring a bad reputation for the upper government either the state government or the federal government image so by looking at Kuala Lumpur which has undergone a positive progress it proved that the Kuala Lumpur City Hall or DBKL did deliver their best services to achieve the vision of DBKL which is to make a Kuala Lumpur a world-class city there will be many challenges that they need to encounter however this is the purpose of DBKL being established in order to assist the central government in developing every territory in Malaysia and to ensure that the to that the public needs is being fulfilled thus DBKL needs to keep updated with the current issues and always need to come out with a resolution as Benjamin Franklin once said if you fail to plan you are planning to fail thank you, thank you. goodbye, goodbye.